Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Emmet in order to write HTML and CSS faster. And by the end of this video, I guarantee you're going to be writing HTML at least twice as fast as you were before, which is going to drastically increase the speed you can create projects. So let's get started now. But before we get started, I want to tell you how to get completely free powerful hosting for an entire year. And that's by using Atlantic.net, which is the sponsor for today's video. They're giving away an entire year for free of their hosting on a really powerful server. This is twice as powerful as the entry level server for most other VPSs. So I highly recommend you check out Atlantic.net to take advantage of the entire year of free hosting. They also have great redundancy and security, so you know your data is going to be safe and backed up on their servers. So make sure you use the code KYLE when you check out, and on top of that year, you're going to get $50 of additional credit. So make sure you go to Atlantic.net, linked in the description, and use the code KYLE. Now on with the video. To get started, I have a blank HTML page open inside of Visual Studio Code. And Emmet is actually built in to Visual Studio Code, so we can start using Emmet immediately as long as you're in an HTML page. And by far, the most used Emmet shortcut that I use personally is when you type exclamation point and hit enter, and it generates all of this boilerplate HTML for you. This is actually part of Emmet. And what Emmet is, is it's essentially a bunch of different shortcuts and snippets where you type a small amount of code, for example, that exclamation point, and it'll generate a bunch of code for you by just typing a small amount of information. And it's really powerful when it comes to creating complex HTML. For example, we have this exclamation point, which generates all this boilerplate document for us, but we can also generate any HTML tag that we want. For example, if we want to make a span, we just type span, hit enter, and it's going to enter in all these brackets for us, the opening, the closing tags, everything we need. Same thing we could do div, we could do any tag that we want. We could do an A tag, for example. And as you see, it automatically populates this href for us and puts the cursor right in the middle of it since it knows an anchor tag needs to have some form of href. And we can do this with pretty much any tag that you can think of, for example, button and so on. And the list goes on and on. And that alone will already save you twice the time because you don't have to type the closing portion. You only have to type that opening word to get that tag generated. But you can actually do much more. If we wanted, for example, a span that has the class of purple, we just put our element span and then dot and the class we want, just like if you made a CSS selector. And when we generate that, you see it creates that class with purple. Obviously, we can do the same thing with IDs. We just type in the ID we want after that pound symbol, and it'll generate that for us. You can almost think of Emmet as writing out CSS inside of your HTML, and when you hit enter, it'll generate the HTML for that CSS selector. And we could do, for example, div with class of class one, and another class of class two with an ID of ID one. And as you can see, it generates all of that information for us, which is really, really powerful. On top of that, something that Emmet does is that it knows the div is the most common element that you're going to use. So if you have a div that you want to create, you don't even need to type div. You can just start typing your class and it'll automatically assume that you want a div. So we could do an ID as well, and it'll automatically assume that we wanted an ID. So we just had to put that period along with the class name, or we could put, for example, the hashtag and the rest of our ID name that we want. And it's just going to assume you want a div. It would be exactly the same as if you put div in front of these different selectors. So that's a really powerful way just to write up basic HTML. For example, when you want a link, you could type in link, hit enter, it automatically assumes it's a style sheet, gives you the href, saves you a bunch of time. So let's clear all of that out. And on top of adding classes and IDs, we can also add attributes. So for example, if we had a button and we wanted this button to be the type equal to button, we could just type that out just like this just like it was H or CSS selector, hit enter, and you can see it creates a button with the type of a button here. We could also do a div. So we could just say that we wanted a div to have data selected, hit enter, and you can see it generated that for us. And the way that this works, if we just go back to this, it automatically assumes that we want a div since we didn't put any selector of an element in front. 
And since we wrote out this attribute, it's going to generate us a div with that attribute. And we can even combine this attribute stuff. So we could say data selected, and we want to do it for the class of active. And there we go. Now we have a div with data selected and a class of active. And it even puts our cursor right here in the data selected. And when we hit tab, it moves us into the div. It's really powerful. And I love Emmet for creating these basic elements, but it can do so much more than just creating these basic elements. For example, we can actually create children elements. So let's say that we wanted to create a div and we wanted to give it the class of, for example, purple. And inside of that div, we wanted to have a span. In CSS, in order to select a child element, you use this greater than symbol here. So we're just going to use that greater than symbol saying that we have a child of our div, which is a span with the class of cyan. And now, as you can see, we have a div with the class purple. And inside that we have a span with the class of cyan. That's really powerful. And we can do, for example, we want a header and inside that header, we want to have a nav inside that nav. We want a UL. And now if we try to hit enter on this, it's going to generate us out a header with a nav inside of it and a UL inside of that. That's really powerful. But we can take this a step further and actually do multiplication, because what if we wanted a bunch of LIs inside of this UL? Well, we can say that we want some child of LIs, and we want, for example, three of them. We just put the multiplication sign, the star symbol, and three, and that's saying that we now want three LIs inside of our UL. And when we hit enter, you see we have these three LIs, and if I type information and hit tab, it moves me to the next LI and the next LI, which is awesome. And on top of that, if we go back to this, we can actually add text inside of these LIs. By using the curly brackets, anything you put inside of them is going to be text that goes inside the element. So we just put a bunch of random text. If we hit enter, you can see all of our LIs are pre-populated with that text. But what if we wanted to count? For example, we wanted LI1 to say one, LI2 to say two, and LI3 to say three. Well, what we can do is use the dollar symbol. This allows us to put numbers inside of our text. So we could say list item and then dollar sign. And what this is going to do is it's going to generate out text inside our LIs that says list item and then the number that we're on. So one, two, or three. And if we hit enter, you can see we get list item one, list item two, and list item three. And the great thing about this dollar sign is we can even use it for classes. We could say, for example, class and then put dollar sign and now what's going to happen is it's going to say class one, class two, and class three. So if we move our cursor to the end here, hit enter, you can see we get class one, class two, class three, and list item one, list item two, and list item three. And the great thing is, is if we add additional dollar signs in here, it's going to essentially zero pad our number. So if we have two dollar signs, you can see we now get a two digit number, zero, one, zero, two, zero, three. And that's really powerful and really great if you wanted to do larger list, for example, and you wanted to zero pad your numbers. Something else that you can do with Emmet is create siblings. So instead of just making children, so a header that has a child of a nav with a child of a UL and a child of an LI, we can actually create siblings. So let's remove all of this code for now. Let's say we want to create a shell of a document where we have a header, a main, and then a footer. Well, we could create our header. And in CSS, we know that the plus symbol is used for siblings. And it's the same thing in Emmet. So we use plus. Then we want a main. So we have a header that has a sibling that's a main and then another plus, and we have a sibling of a footer. And when I hit enter here, you can see we get a header with a main and a footer and they're all siblings. There are no children involved in this situation. But what if we wanted to add a child of a nav to our header? Well, if we go back, we know that we use the greater than symbol here and then we type in nav, but this is actually going to generate slightly different markup than you would think. If we hit enter, you can see everything is a child of header. And that's because when we have this child selector, now everything after it is a child of the thing that came before it, in our case, this header. So in order to navigate upwards, essentially exit out of this header, what we can do is use this caret symbol, which allows us to climb up. It says, right now we're in the child of the header for this nav. Now we wanna climb up. So now we no longer are inside this header. And if we hit enter, you can see we get the markup that we want. But I find this climb up operator to be kind of confusing to work with. So instead, I like to use the grouping characters. So what we can do is wrap this header and nav section 
inside of parentheses, and now it's saying that these are grouped together, just like order of operations when it comes to math. So what it's saying is that this nav is a child of this header, but after that, we're assuming that this main is no longer a child of this nav. It's not in that group. So what we're going to get is the same markup we had before. As you can see, we have a nav and a header, and then our main and our footer. And the reason this works is because we're grouping up our child operators so that these child operators of this greater than symbol isn't leaking out to everything that comes after the nav because none of that stuff is inside this group. So now let's do a little bit of an exercise where we want to create a header and inside that header we're going to have a heading for an h2 as well as a nav that has an ordered list with five items inside of it and we're also going to have a main and a footer on the outside of that. So in order to do that, the first thing we know is we want our header, and inside that header, we want to have a nav and an h2. So we're going to have an h2 with some text that'll say heading, and then adjacent to that, we're going to have our nav, and then inside of our nav, we're going to have an ordered list, and inside of that, we're going to have our five li's, and then inside of these li's, since these are actually links, we want to make sure we have anchor tags, and the anchor tags are going to have the text, which is just going to say link and then dollar sign. Now if we go to the end here, and we actually run this, as you can see, we got a header with a heading of h2 right here, our nav with our ordered list, and each one of those has a link inside of it, inside of a list item, and then outside of here we have our main and our footer. So this is a really powerful way to generate some boilerplate HTML for your document. Another example of something we could do would be, for example, a form. So we could say that we have a form, we're going to make this one a post form, so if we do form post, you can see it automatically populates our method to post. So we're going to have a form, which I said is going to be a post. And inside of here, we're going to have some inputs. So first we're going to have a group div, which is going to contain one of our inputs. So we're going to say input. And as you can see here, we have a bunch of different input options that we can go with. In our case, we're just going to use the basic text box input. So we're going to have our input here. And if we hit enter on this, you can see we have a div that has a group and inside of that we have our input, which is a type of button. So what we need to do is make sure we use input type of text like this. So colon and then the type that you want. And now we actually have an input with the type of text, which has a name and an ID property that we can populate. Now let's say we wanted to have multiple inputs and we also wanted to give these a label. So we're going to give this a label, for example, and then adjacent to that, we're going to have our input and we want to have multiple of these different groups. So what we need to do is actually put these inside of parentheses. Remember, we need to group these together. So we can say, we don't want these to be children of this group. We want to create a brand new group, which is going to be next to it. So we'll say group, and then we want to do a child, which has a label. And then next to that, we're going to have an input, which is going to be a number, for example. And now if we hit enter on this, you can see that we've gotten our form. We have a div group with a label and an input, and then another div group with a label and an input our first input's text, and our second input is number. So it's really powerful the things that you can do with Emmet when it comes to generating HTML. For me, for the most part, I just use the exclamation point at the beginning, as well as writing out shorthand tags by just typing out the tag, or I use it a lot of times for creating different classes, for example, like this. I don't really do it when I create a large markup like this form here, but if you get into the habit of it, it can be really, really useful. Now on top of being useful inside of HTML, you can also use Emmet inside of CSS. So let's just open up here a couple style tags and we can actually create something. We'll just do a random class selector. And now inside of here, we can use Emmet to create easy CSS styling. If we wanted a position of relative, all you do is type POS and you can see we get position relative and it'll generate it for us. If we wanted, for example, a background, we could just type BG and we get background. BGC, we get background color. And there's a ton of different shortcuts inside of CSS. Another one that we can do, for example, would be width. Just type in W, you get width. And if we want to type a value, for example, 10, you can see it's going to generate us a width of 10 pixels, just like that. If we wanted to supply units, we just type our units, and now we have a width of 10 EM. Or, for example, a width of 10%, just like that. Same thing for height. We could do a height of 10 pixels, just like that. And there are hundreds, maybe even thousands of different selectors for the CSS. So I'm going to link the cheat sheet guide from the Emmet documentation in the description that has every single one of these different selectors for CSS and HTML. 
so you can play around and find the ones that work best for you. But there are tons of them, and just by typing around like POS, for example, or W, you can see that these show up in the IntelliSense as Emmet abbreviations. So just by playing around, you're most likely going to run into some of these and be able to start using them in your own code. And that's all there is to Emmet. You can check out other videos just like this one, where I cover topics in depth and quickly, linked over here, and subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this one. Thank you very much for watching and have a good day.